this flat tax system will work a lot for our businesses who grapple with many levels of taxes. And so I'll be introducing a flat tax system in Ghana next year, God willing. And, and we, will, we will simplify the tax regime for everybody. But to be able to make sure we all start afresh on a, on a fresh page, I will also introduce a tax amnesty next year so that we all start afresh so that everybody starts from ground zero when we have a tax amnesty and we'll move forward from there so that you don't have any problems with GRE and you can easily calculate your tax liability. If it's 10%, it's 10%. If it's 15%, everybody can calculate that and you don't need anybody. So that is, that is what we are, we are going to be doing. One of the other areas that I have been focusing on is, is you know, uh, is one of the things that we, we see is that as a developing country, as an African country, we seem to be locked out of a lot of international commerce in, in one way or the other. Why do I say this? I mean, in terms of dealing with uh, international commerce, PayPal, for example, we don't have access to PayPal. And many content creators I've heard have even got money's locked up in PayPal. And when you use PayPal, your money actually sits outside Ghana. It doesn't sit inside Ghana. And so since around 2017, 2018, I've been engaging with PayPal at the very highest levels to say, look, Ghana, we're doing so many things, but we seem to be blacklisted. They've blacklisted us. In that, in that sense, uh, but you know, I was teasing. I said, "How can you have Nigeria have paper and we don't have paper?" And <laughs> so we had a good laugh for, oh, over it, and and and, and all of. It. But in all seriousness, we we've, we've been trying to to get Ghana to have you know that blacklist thing taken off, and we've not been able to be successful. We've gone far but not quite there and so one of the things that we've, we started working with the bank of Ghana and gives to look for alternatives so that because once you are producing you know content music and so on you're getting paid and so on it's very very important how you you do it so uh, we are coming up with an alternative of sorts where we have got got an agreement to do uh, cards which are co-badged, so MasterCard, Union Pay, and Discover have all agreed. So we will now be able to link the Ghana Link card with MasterCard, Discover, or, or Union Pay, and so that you don't need. So that when you're doing international transactions, the Union Pay, MasterCard, or PayPal will kick in, and if it's the domestic. If the, the card will you be used in that so that you can receive your payments uh, that for the content that you are creating uh, through the international section also. So that is something that we will be also announcing very soon so that we can have access into the international e-commerce market. We are also going to be prioritizing the completion of the conference facility as you saw uh, on the, uh, at the Ghana International Trade Fair site, uh, I think it's very, very important to boost tourism. We are going to implement an e-visa policy for all international visitors to Ghana because sometimes, you know, just the visa, obtaining the visa can be discouraging uh, in countries like Kenya and so on, which have more tourists visiting their countries have e-visa policies and, and Ghana doesn't and we're going to to do that to make visa acquisition fast and convenient for tourists. Um, we also want to push just as we are doing for digital hubs in the country to have creative hubs that will also nurture local talent and products as well as empower uh, the exports. Uh, of our talent. 
They, we also want to support the establishment of a national hospitality training school uh, in the tourism sector. This is very, very important. I've visited a few hospitality training schools in places like China, and it's very, very important, you know, that these these training schools uh, are there if we are to expand our tourism um, footprint and and, and, and impact. Uh, in, in this sense. Another area that we, we are clear about is, is that many artists have difficulties in travel, obtaining visas and so on to travel. And so what I want to do is to implement a travel protocol service, the TPS, to support artists, performers and other creatives uh, players to enable them honor performance invitations, seize new opportunities and engage in cultural dialogues and, and present their artistry internationally. So the travel protocol service will facilitate international travel arrangements and logistics for our creatives. And I think that will really be very, very important uh, for all of you. I know you, you, you have all sorts of experiences in, in, in getting visas to go and, and, and do work. What I want to, these are some of the elements that we have put out in our manifesto for the creative arts sector. What I want to do this evening, more important, since you know this sector better, a thousand times better than me, is to also listen to you, um, to listen to you, to get your ideas. I just can help given the position I'm aspiring to. If I get there, I can help. I want, for me, it's all about transformation, how we can transform this country, how we can grow the creative arts industry, how we can grow the tourism industry. And so I want to also hear your ideas, your suggestions, so that uh, should God favor me uh, and, 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 and make me president, and I will know exactly how to uh, pursue the policies uh, in this sector uh, for, for the benefit of all of us. Um, I remember uh, a few months ago I had the opportunity to visit with the Pope in Rome and I asked him one question and I said, you know, Your Holiness, uh, what advice would you give to a politician like me? Uh, you've met so many leaders in the world and, and what advice and what one of the things that he said and i hope he doesn't mind me saying this he said listen a lot before you take a decision and that i have always remembered that since it says listen a lot before you take a decision as as a leader so i want to listen i want to listen to you and i want to encourage you thank you very very much if a musician or a, a, an actor is coming to Ghana, we see a lot of media interact with them. But unfortunately for us, when our artists are going outside, uh, we have a lot of creative arts media here. We cannot go with them because of visa issues or any other issues that comes with it. What would your government do to change that narrative for us? Thank you. I think that generally speaking, is very important because you are in one industry and this all that we are trying to do is to really enhance the lives of the whole creative arts industry and i think if we succeed uh, the whole then becomes a sum of the parts then the media will also be enhanced in the industry if the industry as a whole is going up then because for example you, you mentioned the travel protocol service that i'm going to put Together. It cannot be limited only to the artists. If you have to travel with the media, we will we'll help the media also get the visas for you. It cannot be limited to the artists. So I think it's very, very important that we, we work to make sure that uh, the whole industry, uh, not just uh, the, the, the performance, because you need the, the publicity, you need all of that the content uh, on the social media and all of that. So I think it's, it's important um, to make sure that the media is not left behind. Uh, 
Your Excellency, I was very much touched with the issue on Gamro. Very detailed. Now, I want to give you a little background, just a minute, so that it will add up to the notes you have in trying to repair the office. The problem at Gamro is that as a nation and as an office, we don't have building rates because of logging system. So what is happening is that we've categorized all the artists into segments, into categories. We have A, B, C, D to E and all that. And what happens is that the amount of money that is collected in general from radio stations that we are even struggling to collect is grouped. And then if you have eight albums, you are in category A. If you have 10 albums, you are B in that order. So what that system is actually the reason why you hear an artist having a higher rotation of song on airway and then he doesn't get, he gets 150 Ghana CDs when they are sharing. Because the radio stations cannot rock, particularly to say that Kwame Eugene's song has been played on PC phone for 30,000 times. So if they go to the radio station with a billing card, they can actually say that we have collected 30,000 Ghana CDs for Kwame Eugene's music which has been played. So there's a lot of rot in that system. And so it's about governance. Because as we speak, the radio stations in Ghana do not pay royalties. And our own nation, GTV, is battling with Gamro even for paying royalties. They don't want to pay. And so it is, it's, I want to argue to add up with the NCA. Because every radio station and TV media house goes to NCA to renew licenses. So I want to suggest that in the system, let us ask NCA that every radio station that comes there to renew licenses, you come with a certificate that you have paid your royalties before you renew your licenses. This way, we will solve this issue of Gamro taking any media house to court. It's as simple as that, because until Gamble is able to receive, they cannot pay. The next thing I want to also add, Gamble is suffering from administration difficulties. The country Ghana is growing, Your Excellency, and in your talk, you saw the way Ghana is growing. And we need to segment Gamble into municipal offices, Kumasi, Tabran, all these areas, so that they can have capacity and resources to collect money. Gamro does not have offices. They are, the highest they have is the one they have at the ministry here, and then in Kumasi. And these are mushroom miniature offices with only barely like four computers sitting there. Look at the number and the hits these musicians are making. How can they be able to use these offices to collect money and pay to these art creators? So if we are dealing with this issue, we need to have a proper team so that we can sit down with technical system and then come up with a plan to see how we can fight, uh, survive Gamro. Either than that, it will still be a continental degree work. The problems that we have in the context of Gamro, in fact, uh, the issue of no billing rates uh, because there is no login system. This is, this is in fact, the new uh, uh, platform that has been worked on for, for Gamro, and that's why I said we're going to announce it. It addresses this very problem. This very problem uh, of of uh, no billing rates because the the, the login systems and other the radio stations will not pay the royalties. At least this allows the new platform allows better monitoring by Gamro uh, for us to to do this. But I like the suggestion which I had not thought about before that NCA. We should require that all the royalties are paid before the licenses are renewed. That that is definitely a good idea uh, that that we we can suggest to to NCA and, and I think that administratively, uh, your suggestion that there is there should be some decentralization of the Gamro offices just makes sense uh, because uh, of the widespread nature of this country. And you can't do everything out of one or two offices. So I think that is the 
I want to say thank you very much for calling all of us here and trying to help our industry. God bless you uh, for considering that. Um, you, you said a lot about music. I'm, I'm a music producer, so I'm going to talk about music, basically. Uh, you, 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 you talked about the fact that you're going to do streaming platforms and all that. It's brilliant. But you see, before the, we get to that place, the musician needs to actually record the song first. I'm a music producer, so the, the knocks on my door is just crazy. Mr. Apia, help me. Help me. People finish secondary school, no, they want to record. Recently, I saw what Shatawali was doing, um, helping the youth, some young, young. Yeah. Beautiful, he, with his own pocket money. So, we have done it, I mean, I've done it over 200 and something times. I feel like there should be some financial institution that will be able to help this, our industry, from people who are now coming, new talents and the rest, can go there and get some sort of grant or loan, or soft loan, that they can actually kickstart their careers. You know, to be able to go, because not everybody can own a studio. It's expensive. So, and if you say I want to build one studio for everybody to work there, that's impossible, right? The amount of artists we have now is too much. So, probably also empower the already existing studios, you know, and say, okay, Apia, if we do this for you, or Kewa and that and that, you guys are going to give this to the up and coming artists for this price, because government is also helping you with a certain grant. So that people can kickstart, you know, their careers and become great. Because usually it's about the money. Like somebody said, the promotion. Apart from the studio, you need to promote the song. So much trouble. So I think it's something worth considering that, you know, that will help. I'll be very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the issue of financial support uh, to up and coming artists who want to do recording before they get to the streaming and, 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 and I, I mentioned earlier that the development bank Ghana are going to put make sure that a special vehicle to support the industry from the development bank Ghana uh, is done. So I think supporting of these startups in, in the recording industry, the artists who are coming along can also be factored into this as well. So I think we, we can support up and coming artists in recording. Thank you. Your Excellency, I wish to ask, is, it, is there any um, avenue for women in arts? Because we are not being encouraged. Most times um, people think the job is for only men. And I, I think I'm one of the only females who have been able to stand and uh, make sure I show other women that it's possible. It is possible like this. And I want us to, yes. And I want us to um, make Ghana a beautiful place where people will come. We shouldn't always think of going out. We should always think of bringing people in. So I am standing in as one of the females who would want Ghana to be beautiful. And please don't forget us when you come in office. Women in art, I think, uh, has made a very strong case for for why we should support women in art. And I think that just recently the Affirmative Action Act was passed and it's coming into force. And, and this is, for me, uh, something that we should encourage. And if we need to support more women in art, which we do, I think we should give more affirmative action to women in art, and I'm very, very uh, agreeable uh, to to doing that in terms of uh, making sure that you have the jobs, you have the financing to do those jobs as well. So I'm I'm supportive. Hey, sir, it's a good evening. Good evening to everybody. Um, I'm so glad to be here. But um, initially, I didn't want to come here though. But I have this big problem that I feel. Um, we can work it out together. You know, I've been watching your campaigns, you know, and you talking about creating jobs, and I can see your slogan that says, to lead is to solve, you know, and I'm actually here to just tell you about this whole great people that we have here. Maybe we might be in this room like this, but the people that made us who we are are not in this room, and those are the fans. Your Excellency, I have been on the streets as a ghetto boy. 
and from the ghetto, now nah, these eyes on this move for bucket. So, you know. But most of the times when I'm on the streets, I see these boys at the traffic lights, you know, some of them you go to a zoo, you know, all of them. And I sometimes wonder if a government wants to come into power, like if you want to be my president, I want to understand how well you communicate to these people on the streets. Because these are the fans that, you know, support all of us here. But sometimes when I watch them, I feel like, what is government putting in place for people like this? Because, you know, when they hear, oh, um, we have the mining sector, you know, creating jobs for, we have the um, agriculture sector. These boys on the streets even find it difficult to be in that kind of uniform, to even go and apply for a job. These are boys that don't have any hope. So sometimes we, the celebrities, suffer. I know some people bear with me, Kwame Eugene here, you know, Van Vika here, you know, you go out and you hear them, oh, boss, boss, chairman, something small. And that is why sometimes people like us want to share what we have with them. So I want to know what you have for our fans out there. And that's the street. And your excellency, I'll, ple I'll please plead with you that, you see, when you want to, you know, respond to what I'm saying, for today, and there's people out there on the streets, just say it in pigeon small for me. Shatewale, what you say? The team is a me. Where are the politics? The thing with it, they my heart, no. It be the people. The people are where they suffer for the country. It be where they my heart. Me, I be patron of Lepers Aid Ghana. Me, then Lepers, we they eat. We they drink because they want help. Lepers in Ghana. Me, I be farm laborer before. By day worker. I be taxi driver before. I be cleaner before. Yeah. So, I say I know how people they suffer before. So, uh, where you see me, I be. A patron also of Mother Teresa's soup kitchen, Christ the King Church, looking after street children. Me, the Father Campbell, will they do that sort of work? So, my heart, today, the street. Today, the street. The thing where they do all, say, half of you help the people. So one of the things we you will see, say, okay, yeah, the free education come, it will help. Digitalization to the help plenty. Because when they your mobile phone talk, you know, nobody will ask you bribe. You don't have to know anybody. You know me so. You know, if you apply for anything, know it went up, right on your mobile phone. Okay. So digital, it, 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 it help everybody. You know me so. It, it, me, I come government and submit the thing where I go do, where I go help everyone. Yes. I'm very excited about that scene, but that musical. This guy actually helped the fashion industry to form um, modular when the uh, war was in power. And the reason was because at the time, models were being exploited. And the few that take it upon themselves to go to school to learn this profession and have been exploited. When we have celebrities like my friends here, they take up the little job, like the advertising and all these things that these models learn. And it looks like we've accepted that people don't really understand what models are really up to. So all we are asking for is that we are properly regulated. We want to be able to be licensed. That when people come out and they want to open modeling agencies, they get licenses before they get registered. Because at the time, models were the only acts that when a fashion designer will come in, someone will organize a, model, a fashion show. And when they call the models for audition, they want to charge them. It was Moduga, the Models Union of Ghana, stopped all these things. 
And we're able to regulate the system in such a way that the models began to feel respected. And we want to enhance on that. All we are asking for tonight is to come in power. We support you very well. You see my t-shirts. And I have a lot of models here. They can stand up. You have about 30. Models, stand up. I want the president to see Let's acknowledge our models. Let's I acknowledge our models. Most of them are here. Thank you for coming. I'm at the back. And all they want to say is that they want to be respected. And the only way we can have that is that we want to be properly licensed. Anybody, nobody at all can just get up and do models job. Or come and say that I want to open the models industry. And then I want to add to what he said. I'm also a lady reverend. I go on the street to feed these boys. One of the things I want to say is that it's very, very sad. Every Sunday you see me at our pay, all the guys there know me. And to, to even put money to feed them is not a joke. But it's not only about giving them money. We, 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 every Christmas we sell clothes for them, but it's not enough. Sometimes I give them the clothes and they sell it. I think what they need is rehab. Because if you pick them from the streets and you feed them and you give them anything, they'll just go back. We need very good governmental rehab centers that can really help them change their mindset and know that it's possible for them to do something for themselves. Thank you very much. Lillian talked about uh, models. Um, and making sure they are properly regularized and licensed. Uh, I didn't know, frankly, I didn't know there, there was no, no licensing for models. And, uh, and I think it's a profession, you know, and that must have its own standards and so on. So whatever help you want us to give you uh, to, to get that process done, I will, will provide you that support so that you, you can get, so that, you, you know, with that, it also stops exploitation. Now, Sana, let me just have a question. Uh, Mr. President, say, Gamro, Elance, say, over two years in here, year renew, it be you must say, say, you may be here, Elance, say, you may be here, you say, you may be here, you may be here, you may be here, Lot of phobia, Elance is you are. A bad day, sir, you have a cancer or a lot of form. In two years, you are me in penny form. Someone can come a or be with you, Lance's home. I say, twenty sixteen, any twenty twenty now, NPP manifesto, I dare to see an edda creative work, Maso, a theatres. In twenty sixteen, or kind, any book can see a share or say. Ultra modern theater 2020 so ultra modern theater a buy oh manifest to mono but that one my own theater be a woman a person may be say and who in here oh my first to me say who be here creative now now say ya boa man yes yeah yeah theater so i feel back oh yeah amphitheater now yeah they my own 2022, Sarah Naira Awa, and the tourism minister, of a cancer or my three amphitheaters in 2022, Nakabe Bosme and Sa, Na Afina Konewe, and Yamea Duma 2023, Deputy Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Ewo Krekumanti, Kumase, April, Mumbe, 19th April 2023, and Okati saw the same. Yeah, yeah, amphitheaters in their mind. And Paya who say yes, it will cancel by July last 2023. Near Siri, July and a buyer, yeah, Mushe and Chair, and you who say now, uh, Minister, so Senate Minister, you are a messer, and so she have commands and trophy. I'm one or the two, yes, before December, near we and now we are joy from four, Eddie, you may be a more fair. And when you form a casafa, creative human deal. Now, come up with people who say, Amphitheater now, you hear me saying, KB before July, December. You will come and take a catch and say, I didn't see a boss. I feel busy when I was woman as a first quarter, and a baby. You will have a sour hands, no cassa. Sikaba, I'm with the baby. It's a busy who say, Why not can't be a dinner? You hear me say, Theater, I am feeding. The whole idea of Gamro, I, in fact, I'm part. We in a meeting, many Gamro, 
Omo can say, uh, Omo license no, uh, expire 80 minute attorney general in the Casa at the end of the meeting. Say, Omo, Omo the license, the like the last two years, Omo the license, and uh, problem be a cry over because uh, Omo Nyanya election, and so it's an issue of chicken and egg. Me. That's uh, so many attorney general in America will resolve that problem for Gambro. They will resolve it for Gambro. The other thing was that um, we haven't repeated the promise uh, we will build theaters in my 2024 man manifesto. I didn't think it was uh, uh, credible to put in a promise to build more new theaters when you haven't finished those that you were to build in the first place. So my thinking is let's finish what we said we were going to finish. Then you will have the credibility to promise to do anything else. So that is where I, I am looking at with the amphitheaters. And I'm hoping the minister said today that uh, some of the World Bank money, I think about $12 million or so, is going to to go to the amphitheaters to complete them. So I'm hoping that they can complete those those ones. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to acknowledge that the MPP has done a lot in terms of the creative sector. You always forget to add the secret services, the kind of retooling that we have done to them. Anytime we are communicating, we leave them out. But it's part of the success story. And two, data collection, when you are elected as a president, Data collection amongst the creative industry should be priority. If you are able to get the data, then every sector issue will be, will be solved. The last but not the least is to the revival of creative clubs in schools, including bands, acting, fine art, etc. I would like to take it upon myself to discover a lot of talents in the various schools because if you come here, Apiatus is one of them, Samini, most of the people here have passed through my hands. So I want to dedicate myself the next couple of years to also you know, uh, uh, get a lot of activities from the various schools to discover a lot of talents to help in the creative industry. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, we've really equipped the security service in a very major way, very, very major. I think um, across the Army, the Navy, the police, the, it's just been massive improvement. Uh, and maybe we should tell more of that story data collection amongst the creative I mean, data is what moves the world now. And if you don't have data, it means you cannot measure. And if you cannot measure, how can you improve? You can't improve anything you cannot measure. And so the whole uh, aspect of data collection so that we can track and measure, I think is, is very, very important. And I agree with you on the revival of creative arts clubs in that sense. I am a playwright. I act. I dance on music too. It, it's strange to me that leaders of this country, all this while, have failed or refused to see the importance of the arts in the development of this country. We're not, we've been at the fringes of all discussions. It is time to bring us to the center. Because I have said several times that the development of this country to a large extent depends on how we handle this industry. California is the richest state in the US. We all know what California's main industry is. It's the arts. The importance of, we, we only look at the arts sometimes as providers of entertainment, providers of entertainment. But our importance can also be measured in many ways. His Excellency in the 90s, in the early 90s, Guinea World Manifestation in Ghana was the second highest only to Sudan when Sudan was at war. President Rawlings went for a conference, a WHO conference, where this matter was discussed. He felt so embarrassed that when he returned, he immediately set up an interministerial conference to look at how the guinea worm could be either reduced or taken out. 
Madam Joyce Ayi was part of the committee and she came up and said she thinks it's the act that can be used to resolve this matter. And so when she was asked to propose somebody, she proposed me. And I was called to battle guinea worm infestation in Ghana. His Excellency, I made up a team, we went to the northern region was the peak and uh, the, the center. We stayed in the northern region for six months. By the time we were leaving, there were no new discoveries. All the, the, only the old ones were still being treated. We have a very, uh, we're talking about, Gyalam say is a major problem now. If the artists had been involved, by now we would have resolved the Gyalam say problem. Yes. Yes. HIV, AIDS and all those, we, the artists of this country, have to resolve it. So, I am not going to ask a question. I don't like asking questions. We are not beggars. I am proposing, I am proposing that if you win by God's grace or however, and you want to succeed, one of the key sectors that can help you succeed as president will be the creative arts. Will be the creative arts. We cannot, as of now, we are not in a position to compete with Japan or Korea on the manufacture of computers and all that. One area that we have our own comparative advantage is the art. Agua is ours. Uh, Panogo is ours. All the various dances and all are ours. That well developed can bring in money, create jobs. The two million young men who are in Galamse, I'm sure about one million, if we could go and survey, would have some talent that would be developed. Finally, finally, we need to make, I was, I was at a, a youth conference in Dominican Republic in the early 20s. And one of our guys took us to a nightclub one evening. A young lady was introduced as an up and coming musician. I'm talking about Rihanna. I'm talking about Rihanna. She was about 15, 16 years when she came and performed there. The country took her up as a product and marketed her. We have many, at our, our Shatawales and Bekas and all. These are people that we could make, we could turn into, into cash cows. Rihanna is now a billionaire. We could, we could create our own Rihanna's here. Finally, because I have been, I've had the occasion, I've had the privilege of being part of cultural groups that have traveled and participated in international competitions. And on one occasion, my play, which was performed in Korea, won the gold medal for Ghana. Mrs. Excellency, there are many good talents here that we could bring up to help solve the of our government program. Thank you. Uh, our senior, Abe Kuseiko, uh, made a very passionate uh, plea uh, for us to focus on the creative arts. And I hundred, uh, or should I say a thousand percent agree with all your submissions on that matter. And this is how I started when I was speaking to you, that when you look at the industry, it's a major growth pool for any country. Uh, and especially for us, I think that the talent pool is so much. And it's, it's just a shame that historically, we haven't paid as much attention to this industry as, 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 as a country. Uh, and and I, I totally agree with you that, the, 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 and this is what I said, that the return to investment in this industry is very, very high and then we should be doing so. And, and I think I am very determined and I've already stated it in our manifesto that we're going to increase uh, very significantly the public investment in the creative arts sector so that we can reap the benefits. Without investing, you cannot get any benefits. And so I think the other countries which have invested uh, you know, in their artists like Rihanna and so on, uh, we can take a leaf that. But what where I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly also is that the, the, the talent that we have is it cannot be replicated outside. It's ours, you know. So that is what we should market 
and, and there is no competition for that talent in that sense. So it gives us a comparative advantage um, that others don't have. So I, I, I'm fully, fully uh, in agreement with you. My name is the nation's worshiper. You can call me Brother Samuel. Yeah. Uh, what I want to ask is... Uh, more fans, more fans, more fans. They said it's... My main country is my own tongue. I said, yeah. I just please, did, did you hear Chi? You hear? You hear Chi? So I, I should continue. To what I want to say is, um, please let me talk up here to allow, allow, please. Allow. Let me speak English, you know. Uh, mine is, uh, I just want to beg for something because I know you are coming. It is possible you are coming. Me, dear, I know you are coming. When uh, it got the time, say, and you to phone move phone, me, ye ni na ne ye yare. Enti ni mesele se nka ubi cha e bo bi ato. Say utu utu ni mtu age we and now ye move utu age we, o modern utu age we ya. Kabi a man tibi a man usi a na ebi cha si kabi a tu a pension pe bi a, at least. Ubi are we our mobile team MS wrestling and saying we saw that you 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 go to your support and do him adore. Send the way ah, we trap and go be to her. Be a winner seventy years, sixty years ah. Be a man, you be man who say, and I be trap go be a man wa. I think at least it can help. Shatter, I hope you agree with me. God bless you, uh, brother. Sami also talked about pension for uh, artists as they grow older. And that is where I, 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 I'm saying that if we don't uh, make sure artists have the revenues that are due them, the royalties that are due them, then they will end up being poor. But if we implement these new um, platforms as the president uh, for for music i was saying if we implement login platforms and everything and gambro gets all these revenues and so on uh for, and the royalties for the artists then you are able to contribute to your own pensions under the tier 2 pension plan and you won't depend on anybody so let's get the money for the for the artists and the musicians and the actors and the, i think we will take care of that as a musical president, we've already submitted our proposals and today you have addressed many of them, which I'm really pleased. I'm also looking forward to uh, the end of analog music in Ghana. Because uh, when I was doing my sound engineering, we were the last batch that moved from analog to fully digital. And these days, uh, we can see so many musicians selling CDs and pen drives and things. So I'm looking forward to 31st, where we're going to launch an IT solution that is going to take Ghana into fully, fully digital royalties and everything monitoring uh, system that is going to come into Ghana. And I know that is going to change a whole lot of things. And gone will be the days that if your music is not being used, if they are not playing your music, you just go and collect royalties. No, it will be. When your music is used, it will be calculated. You know how much you're going to get even before your royalty sets in. And I'm looking forward to 31st the launcher. I will encourage everybody, Shata, Samini, to come in there and also contribute with your beautiful ideas so that in Ghana, this is going to be for Ghanaians, made in Ghana. And it's just like anywhere in the world, and it's going to help. But my last um, one is, as doctors, they bring in instruments and they're exempted from paying tax um, in case. God permits you to become the president, 
to try and to make sure that when we bring in instruments that we use to ply our trade, we be exempted from paying tax. Thank you very much. Uh, and I am also very much looking forward to the end of analog. Uh, let's go digital. And that, that is really uh, something that we should look at it. With tax incentives, uh, I've already mentioned in our manifesto that we will have to give tax incentives. That is part of the investment in the industry, uh, so that you can, so we can sit with you to look at some of these incentives. Thank you. I'm also going to touch up on copyright acts and regulations in this country, uh, because by virtue of the fact that we've subscribed to the ideals of the Beijing Treaty and we've ratified it, we ought to be updated. So I believe that government should set up an agency that has the login system at the end of the pipe that we have coming into the country. And then they could have a platform that takes care of both the music, login, and also the film and management of that. So the two CMOs could fetch their data from a government agency that would allow them to be able to account for anything and everything that is useful for the accounting of royalties for the music so the film so rights act and regulations update dr balmia we're looking at um, the setting up of the login system for both film and music at the nca as an agency so you can control it automatically that will map into the areas of licensing for broadcasters exhibitors and any of the digital platforms that we're using in this country. The solutions are quite clear. 2016, MPB did a good job. In fact, so let's say NDC did a good job of allowing the copyright, I'm uh, sorry, the, the Act 935, which is a film development and classification to go through, which gave birth to the NFA and the rest of it. I also know when the MPB came in, they did a fantastic job of you know, bring, bringing our team together. George Busumpim is here, my brother is here, uh, Ken Fiati. There's, there's quite a few of us that went to who has a task team to go and develop an ally in support of Act 935. Brilliant stuff that has been put together by industry stakeholder groups, namely the Ghana Actors Guild, the Film, Develop the film, film Producers Association, Film and Television Crew Association of Ghana, Directors Guild, the whole lot, in fact, the whole host of us, including legal luminaries. One of them who was on the table with us has become a judge. So it was not a joke. We were serious. We put it together and made sure we have a working document that has been presented to the sector ministry. And I, I, I'm just hoping that I spoke to my brother the last time, you remember? And the idea was that he was going to fetch the document and possibly we'll probably get our team to come and make a presentation on the direction where this document is supposed to go. The act has been passed, but we need the ally for Act 935 to, to be put in play, and then we can be able to start the kickstart the film economy out of that. Dr. Bamiya, what I mean by the film economy is that today we have a film industry, but we do not have a film economy. And what I mean by that is that there's a section of the Copyright Act and Regulation, which is section 30, that speaks of performance rights, Dr. Baumia, performance rights to a contract. You and I know that the basis of any business transaction is contracts and agreements. Here we have a of, a, of, a, of an act of parliament that says that a performer has, is, has an entitlement to a, a, a contract, but there's nothing that is mandatory for that document to be obligatorily issued, it means that anybody can choose to issue or not to issue. So if you push for the airline that we have drafted together and you have us seal it, you'll find that we've cured a lot of those problems in that document. And in that, we'll be able to get to a point where it becomes mandatory for any performer to engage any person with these documents in their hands. And therefore, all the rights as for the performer will also be locked into all the remuneration that comes from the performer. And that way we'll be able to have the film economy. That would also not be to the health and, 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 and their well-being and their welfare. There's a lot of solutions, but I believe some of them can be spoken when you come into power. Thank you. That I, uh, I will agree there. And I think that the of a login uh, at the NCA uh, for 
both the film and music, um, of course, makes a lot of sense uh, that we, we uh, the LI-935, which has uh, not yet been, you know, put on the table. And then to ask holding this, uh, I think it's, it is, it, once that LI table, it cures some of the issues that you're going to to move the film industry into the economy, as, as you have put it. I'm quite uh, with you. The issue uh, Tilly also raised was uh, let's make sure we who understand the industry. I think that is very, very important. And I, there's no point in putting people I mean, we have got major transformation to charge of a sector that they don't understand the sector. But you ten times more difficult uh, in that. So I think Tilly's point is a lot of I'm more concerned about policies and laws. Uh, within the last, I think, eight or so years, we've done a lot of laws but let me look at it critically the legislative instruments that back those laws have not been pushed yet remember that uh, 2020 just around the same time same this same month in 2020 the government pushed for the creation of the uh, the creative arts agency through an, uh, a, a certificate of agency for us to pass out after that, we've created a legislative instrument. I'm asking, with that one and the Act 935 that my brother mentioned, and the cultural policy, and then our broadcast bill, what are you going to do about that? Will you be able to push it through this last uh, uh, sitting? Because without the LI, I don't think that we have proper regulation, like the lady mentioned about licensing and all those things. We don't have these things. We can talk as much as we want. If there are no laws to back it, we can't hold the politician for, to, to, to bear to that because there's no law. He has just promised you, that's it. And so it's very important to us. The other thing is that it's good that you're creating the creative arts school. When they finish from there, it's basically, basically uh, SHS. They'll go to the universities. And one of the universities now is the University of Media Arts and uh, Communication which the Institute of Film and Television is part of, and I'm a teacher there. Since you put the GIJ, GIL, and uh, NAFTI together, you've not given us our seed money. And, you know, for the past 30, I think 35 or so years, there's this monster sitting at NAFTI. In Cantonment, close to you, where you, 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 your, your residence is. And you're not the only person who's come to live there, so I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming all those vice presidents and presidents who have lived at that area. Who would you that want to get and come and pass and just wait, 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 and just pass? I'm inviting you. Please come and see the monster. It will kill a lot of things because there are promises that we've seen in the in the in the in the, in the no, I'm talking about the, the, the manifesto. The past eight or so years that have not been fulfilled. What is it I'm talking about? I'm talking about the multi-purpose studio. There's one sitting there that is not completed. And we presented a paper 2018 with the tasking, the film tasking, to say that, look, you don't need to go and build a new thing. There's one sitting there. Come and fix it. You see, come and fix it. 35 years now. When are we going to build this? And now we are going to even go and look for land and go and build another one. So the question is that the ongoing multi-purpose studio should be looked at. Yes. That's your input. Yes, that's my input. Thank you. The issue of policies and laws have been passed, but the allies to back them and to make them effective have not been done. Like uh, the Creative Arts Agency, broadcast bill. Uh, we'll see about how we can uh, put them through. I think the ally has to be laid for 21 days or so to mature. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see how we can get it done in this city. Then the 
whole issue of lack of seed money for the university. And I, I think that uh, I will have to take that with the Minister for Finance to, to find out exactly why the seed money has not yet uh, gone. You've invited me to come and see this monster um, and I'm close by, so I, I will be happy uh, because what, what you're saying basically is that we could save a lot of money by rather completing that, that starting something new. And I, and, I, and I think it's also well put. What policies can your government put in place to recognize our contribution? Because without us, there's no event. What can you provide to support our resources? For instance, we'll try very hard save and then we ship things from China. We go sometimes by ourselves to get the things down. But when the things get to the port, the bills or, or the charges at the port is too much. Now we can't even sell it. Now you have yes, what you want more? Okay, cow no. So we are pleading, please, we are here this evening as event flat rates, you as event vendors association of Ghana. Are we not here? So please thank you very much. I think that for the things that you are importing, one of the key areas that we are reforming is the tax regime at the port and we're going to move towards a flat tax regime uh, to simplify the tax regime at the port so so that it's very simple for, for everybody uh, and we we have said as a matter of taxes on any goods cannot be higher than taxes since we are competing ports uh, and that, that is what one of the things we are going to do. Hopefully, uh, incoming president, what would be your contribution to the comedy industry and how do you address the taxing each issues on our intellectual properties? Thank you. This is where I believe the, the flat issue works because it's a tax on your, your profits and if you make zero profits, you pay zero tax. It's very, very simple. And that's, that is why I, I believe that currently the system is complicated. And when you don't even make money, GRA wants you to pay money. And that is where the problem is. You know? So we, we want to take that matter out uh, for, so that we, we, we have a very good thing. Uh, some musicians and some industry folks, we formed a group called uh, Alliance for Change. Now, Alliance for Change, we decided to engage Gambro to find out what was happening with Gambro. So when we engaged them, there were a few things that we found out. Now, one was that uh, we found out certain monies that were being paid to board members were even higher than monies being paid to musicians. Now, when we, we asked them, they said they are not a CMO. They are not operating as a CMO. So we wrote letters to the Attorney General's department. We never had any reply whatsoever. So all I'm saying is that since you said you've started engaging Gamro, I want to say that it is not about just fixing Gamro and moving on. Gamro needs to be probed. It needs to be probed because there are people at Gamro who claim this government is incompetent. And so for people like that who are manning Gamro and causing all this embezzlement, it needs to be probed. That is one. Now, my second issue is with Ghanaian content. As a, as a Ghanaian kid, uh, as a Ghanaian kid in every home, the day a stranger comes to the house is the day, you know, the, the big meat is served to the stranger. The Pyrex bowl that has never been used is used to serve the stranger. So as a kid, you are being oriented that a stranger is important than you. And this has grown with us to the point that Ghanaians accept foreign stuff more than Ghanaians. So our biggest artists in Ghana here are always competing. The biggest artist in Ghana's song will be competing with a foreign song in his own land. So like when Betty is in my, I had a friend from America who asked me, this artist must have a lot of money. And that song that was being played, she was hearing it everywhere. It was not even a Ghanaian song. So how do we prioritize Ghanaian content? Today, we see TV stations who would pick some uh, soap opera from Mexico or soap opera from India and do a talk over it. And this has saturated the system a lot. 
I believe, Mr. Uh, my, uh, Mr. Excellency, one day you might come home and see your kids, you know, uh, playing or trying to speak Indian. Because this is what is being showed okay. to them at home. Thank you. So how do we prioritize Ghanaian content? How do we prioritize Ghana? The issue uh, of Gamro uh, that, that, that was raised, um, I think the, the Attorney General will, will have to look at it since it's under his place. Uh, Ghana be prioritized. I think it's a very important point beyond even just the the arts is be is is countrywide. It's, it's really the whole issue uh, of Ghanaian content nationwide. Um, I have a policy that I am focusing on, which is the Buy Ghana First policy, uh, which is going to be backed by law, but says that for the most part, you know, when we are buying as government and government procurement is very significant, very, very significant. The law will say we should buy Ghana first, unless the good is not here. Let us encourage our industries, let us create the jobs here. And so I think that that whole issue of trying to encourage more Ghanaian content across uh, we should we should try and do exactly that. So I'm I'm very much in support of uh, any initiatives that we can use to see more Ghanaian content in the arts on our screens and so on.